Welcome to the Beast Rider Podcast. I am your host, Ryan Sakamoto, and today we are going to be discussing and breaking down this morning's news as it pertains to the San Francisco 49ers inquiring about quarterback Teddy Bridgewater of the Carolina Panthers. So let's get started. Now, for those who are new to subscribing to my channel, thank you for tuning in. For those who already subscribed to my channel, thank you to you as well. Be sure for the both of you to flip on and turn on the bell notifications so you get notified when I go live or when I upload content. And the reason I'm saying that in every podcast is because some of you are saying that you guys aren't getting notifications when I go live. Well, if you simply turn on the bell notifications on your phone and turn it to all, you will get notified. And I don't know if it's on your tablet or cell phone. It doesn't really matter because you will get that notification once you log into YouTube. All right. Also, I'm noticing my analytics that 73% of you are liking all my stuff but have yet to subscribe to my channel. So do me a solid and go ahead and hit the subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner of your screen as you stay up to date on all things Beast in real time. All right, so without further ado, let's get down to business and talk about what we really need to discuss, and that is the 49ers inquiring about Teddy Bridgewater's services. Hmm, interesting. All right, so let's go ahead and break it down, and here we go. Well, Let's start with the background, right? The financials. So Teddy Bridgewater signed a contract with the Carolina Panthers last year. And as we know, his 2021 cap number is $22.9 million. However, if the Carolina Panthers were to move on from Teddy Bridgewater via trade, they would only endure a $10 million cap hit as opposed to releasing him. Furthermore, they would save $12.9 million off the cap. If you watched my earlier podcast on GM Scott Fitter, because I have a lot of Carolina Panthers fans on here, and they're great. They've been awesome. Keep pounding Panthers fans. This is news that you guys I know we're talking about right now, especially on Twitter and so forth. But getting back to this specific podcast, you would know that I said that GM Scott Fitter is one of the most aggressive players, and you guys got a great GM. So it's interesting that this news comes out after some of the quarterback moving parts have been set with Carson Wentz going off to um, Carolina, going off to Indianapolis Colts, and they have Matthew Stafford being shipped out to the LA Rams and then Jared Goff going to the Detroit Lions. So you really have some moving parts there at the top of the draft. Now, with that being said, specifically as it pertains to the Carolina Panthers, they hold draft position at number eight. So obviously they're in the market for a quarterback because You have Zach Wilson, Justin Fields, and Trevor Lawrence. Obviously, Trevor Lawrence is going number one. There's no guesswork there. However, when it comes to number two, Zach Wilson and Justin Fields, I believe those guys will be off the board by the time the Carolina Panthers pick. So if they were thinking about making a play, and like I'm telling you right now, don't be surprised if GM Scott Fitter pulls the trigger on something like this because he needs a franchise quarterback. Obviously, Teddy Bridgewater is not the long-term answer, and he knows that. So... If he wants to make a play for Fields or Zach Wilson or even Trey Lance, he is a guy that will pull that trigger, whoever he believes that quarterback will be. So I wanted to quickly point out that being in the NFL media, you really have to read between the lines. This news comes out after some of those moving parts were made that I just mentioned as it pertains to the quarterback positions and what's going around in regards to all 32 NFL teams. Furthermore, the pro days coming up for these top tier quarterbacks, it's interesting that this news comes out today. It doesn't tell you, they don't tell you when this conversation took place as to when the 49ers made contact with the Carolina Panthers for Teddy Bridgewater. Was it after all those moving parts were made or was it before? Is this all a smokescreen so the teams can hide both teams benefit because they can hide interest in what they're actually trying to do, whether it's sticking with Jimmy G or whether it's moving on from Jimmy G, whether they want Teddy Bridgewater or think about moving on from Teddy Bridgewater and then moving up in the draft and possibly into the top five for a franchise quarterback. You see, there's a lot of things you guys have to look into. And anytime you read something like this, especially right now, you really don't know when that conversation took place. Is it Recent news or is it old news? See, you don't really don't know. But what we do know is that the Niners did inquire about Teddy Bridgewater. Now, getting back to Teddy Bridgewater, let's go ahead and talk about from the 49ers perspective on whether or not he is an upgrade 
over Jimmy G, right? So let's look at some stats here. He had a 69.1% completion percentage, 3,733 passing yards, 15, touch 15 touchdowns against 11 interceptions, and a 92.1 passer rating. So on the surface, it looks great. In the box scores, it looks great. 15 touchdowns against 11 interceptions, that's where it kind of gets dicey. And if you were to ask me if Teddy Bridgewater is an upgrade over Jimmy Garoppolo, I would say, heck no. Heck no. I'd rather keep Jimmy G, right? Now, financially, as I pointed out earlier, it makes sense. Why? Because Teddy Bridgewater would only be owed by the San Francisco 49ers $12.9 million because the Carolina Panthers are absorbing the second half of that 2021 cap number, which is $10 million in dead money. So financially, it does make sense. But whether you keep Jimmy G or move on from Jimmy G, whoever the quarterback is in San Francisco, you have to make a choice, right? You have to take a stance and make a choice. And this is what I'm going to talk about as to why you have to make a choice because it's unfair for Jimmy Garoppolo to wake up every morning and hear his news, hear this news that, you know, they're looking elsewhere. It has to be mentally draining. I mean, he might be having nightmares. Who knows? And I know the NFL is a business, but at the end of the day, it's like if you're going to move on from Jimmy Garoppolo, just move on from Jimmy Garoppolo. Like why put out this stuff in the media and letting people know, hey, look, we're looking elsewhere at quarterback. If you're really saying that Jimmy Garoppolo is the starter, then why is this news coming out now? Like it's just interesting for me to see this. And it's just for Jimmy Garoppolo's perspective, and I wrote an, an earlier podcast on that, and I spoke about this podcast earlier, the Jimmy G perspective is real. Like, it's it, it's funny. It's kind of like, I'm not going to go into details about it. You can watch that earlier podcast in the description below. But it's basically talking about how I use the analogy of the in-laws who don't like you around the family holidays, right? And then you have to go into, uh, when the family holidays roll around, you go into Thanksgiving roll into Christmas, you step in that front door, just like Jimmy G stepping into the locker room as the new league year begins. And there's Jimmy, Jimmy G walking in, there's Kyle Shanahan sitting there, there's Sean Lynn standing there. And you're wondering if they're talking about you. And then they're like, Oh, how you doing? And then Jimmy G is going to be like, yeah, I'm good, bro. How you guys doing? I'm good. Awkward. That's heck of awkward, bro. That's the same analogy as if you walk into the in-laws house, bro, and you know that they're telling your wife to leave your sorry, but but they have to save face and you have to save face because for the sake of the holiday season, you have to bite your tongue, right? So same exact thing. How can you actually truly perform at your highest or perform at your best from a professional standpoint on the field when you're having all this chatter going back and forth? around the NFL Bay area headlines, like it, around like circling NFL Bay area headlines. It's crazy, man. It's just nuts. And here in the local Bay area, everyone's talking about Jimmy Garoppolo. Anytime I go to gym, what's going on, Jimmy Garoppolo, what's going on? I'm just like, Oh my gosh, dude, I am tired of talking about Jimmy Garoppolo, but getting back to the specific podcast, they have to take a stance and they meaning the 49ers, right? Whoever the quarterback is, you make a choice and you stand by that choice in 2021, you either keep Jimmy G or trade Jimmy G. You don't want a toxic quarterback, position where you have the Montana Steve Young dynamic. You don't want the Alex Smith, Colin Kaepernick toxic dynamic under the Harbaugh years. You want to place your trust in one. So Fortnite ultimately chose Young, Harbaugh ultimately chose Kaepernick, and Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch are choosing who? I mean, time will tell, but make a stance. Take a stance, roll with your G, or kickstart your plan B. That's what you need to do. That's what you need to do to San Francisco 49ers because it's ridiculous to keep walking the fence. It's not fair to Jimmy G, like I said. And you really, 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 really need to establish what exactly you want at the quarterback position. You can't, it's not fair to Jimmy G to have to wake up every morning and just hear about all this chatter and rumors and gossip. It's just ridiculous. It's just you want Jimmy G? Stay with Jimmy G. Now you go on air and say on KBR or whatever, the flagship station, of course, and then you go, oh, yeah, you know, we want Jimmy G. Yeah, he's our starter. But then this news comes out, and then there's also reports that you're going after Stafford, and then there's also reports about other things, and then what they're going to do in the draft. And so this could all be a smokescreen at the end of the day. So we just kind of have to decipher that, closely monitor the situation. But it's funny how this news comes out now, especially with the draft coming up. 
and with all those other quarterbacks already off the board in Carson Wentz and Matthew Stafford, it's just getting crazy. Now, of course, Deshaun Watson talk is probably going to pick up soon too. So I don't know. That's my thoughts. What are your thoughts forever faithful? Because, or I want to know your fans. Uh, I want to know your fans. I want to know your take as to what you guys think about the specific podcast as it relates to Jimmy G. Should they keep him? Should they trade him? What's going on there? And what are your thoughts on Teddy Bridgewater? Is he an upgrade over Jimmy Garoppolo? And then my last but not least question to you guys, whether you're a 49er fan, Panther fan, or just an NFL fan in general who follows us in this Beast Rider family where social media engagement is encouraged. Would you make this deal? Would you trade for Teddy Bridgewater and what would it take? And if that was the case, what would you get for Jimmy Garoppolo and where would he be shipped off to? Obviously, a lot of moving parts. A lot of moving parts. All right. So that'll be it for right now. I'll hop on this podcast later on with my man, Jerry Yang. We are having our first guest speaker here on the Beast Rider podcast. Stay tuned for that. It's going to be lit. Thank you for tuning in. Have a good day. Beast Rider out.